lighter, trying something a little different today. One little thing that I need to apologize for just in case I've got a blocked ear, so I might be sounding a little off today. Let's get started with the demo, or the demo, little demonstration. Yesterday was a good day. Photographed a little ballerina who's about this high. Very energetic, very excited to have her photos taken. And this backdrop was all the way to the top, so I'll put some b-roll of that all the way at the top. I had some natural light shining in from the sun through here, so I had a gray sheet up at the back here to kind of block that extra light coming in that I didn't want affecting the photos. PVC, I'm finding it to be quite useful. It is the first time that I'm using this PVC backdrop. It's a black PVC backdrop doubled up with the white on the other side, so that's quite handy. But the thing about PVC, the advantage is, is that you can wipe it down with a damp cloth when you're finished. So you don't need to cut it every time someone stood on it and dirtied it like with the paper ones like we've got back in London. But it is a little bit more shiny. So that's definitely something to be conscientious of when it comes to lighting with very strong lights. Moving on to the lights, I shot this particular scene. I needed a very strong light. So the Nan Light 4 to 500 was a good choice for this one. I shot it at maximum intensity because I knew this little ballerina was going to be moving around, meaning I was going to need to shoot at a high shutter speed to avoid the motion blur. The first few shots that we had, the, the shadows were nice and dramatic, but I wanted to have a little bit more control over the shadows and therefore have a little bit of a more soft shadow feel to my raw images, which is why I brought out this reflector. I don't know if I said reflector or reflector, but it was the, the white part, the reflector, to help balance the light from the main light and then a little bit of extra light on my subject's face, which I can control the shadows a bit more in post, but I preferred that soft shadow look for these sessions. I think that's it. I think that was the setup. With regard to me, I was all over the show. I was shooting from the floor, from under the desk. This desk was moved further back. I had a lot more space shooting from up, down, upside down, everywhere. I'm pretty sure, like I said, a lot of the photos came out quite nicely. And at the end of the session, I took some portraits of the subject. Mother, she and I went to school. We've been friends since we were 11. And I noticed very quickly while trying to take her portrait that she was not comfortable in front of the camera, which I thought was a perfect opportunity to take a video portrait. I am starting to find as a photographer of people, there is a fun challenge in bringing out a vulnerable side to your subject, especially if a subject is not comfortable in front of the camera. You know that they want to have their photo taken. You know that you, they want to be seen in a certain way. And the vulnerability that they give you to allow you to capture that of them is, I, I guess I'd go as far as saying as it is a privilege to do that as a photographer. It's definitely something that I enjoy about the photography. I don't feel that it is my job to bring that out of the subject, but it's nice when you can do it. If you can bring yourself to care enough to bring out that vulnerability in the subject that you're taking the photo of, I think it will only contribute positively to your portfolio, to your work, to your progression as an artist. I didn't think the video would be on this, so the rest will be voiceover because I'm actually really having trouble speaking with my ear blocked like this. I'm getting a little bit self-conscious. So let's wait for this to clear up and I'll voice over from there. Let's end this video off with some constructive notes. First of all, the shiny PVC was a significant factor and I will need to keep that in front of mind next time. Having said that, for this session, I think that the way that all the factors that contributed to the shoot from the reflective PVC providing texture, the colors that the ballerina wore to the eventual top-down 45 degree lighting, those factors came together nicely and provided some decent images that mesh well with my style of photography. With regard to the lighting, the problems came twofold or from two different perspectives, both of which were user error. Firstly, my decision to shoot at a higher shutter speed was the correct one because I wanted to control or I wanted a certain, no, I wanted complete control over the motion blur. If there was gonna be any type of motion blur, I was gonna put that in, in post, at least for this particular session. The mistake that I made was guessing that a speed of a one hundredth of a second would be appropriate. This meant that even with the Nan Light 4 to 500 at 100% intensity, I ended up introducing digital noise with the amount of ISO that I ended up bringing into the photos. Is that, a, is that the correct way of putting it? The amount of, the amount of, from, for which I elevated the ISO. The sun's, excuse the changing of lighting, I'm using 
natural sunlight for this. So the mistake that I made was not making a simple Google search that would have told me that a 500th of a second would have been enough for photographing a dancer. This would have meant that I would need to bring up the ISO by less and therefore introduce less digital noise into the original photos and into the final edited photos as well. The next error overall was that I let my doubts overcome me and I let my fear stop me from shooting with my flash system. I have a flash system but I don't have that all round second nature way about it yet. I still have to think about what I'm doing and it's not a, it's not muscle memory yet, the flash system utilization. So I need to get more comfortable with using the flash as second nature because the light intensity that a flash can provide would have made all my comments about the lighting and the noise situation unnecessary. But a continuous light did let me shoot some bursts while the ballerina was jumping. So overall, the main mistake was my shutter speed, which I could have which, which wouldn't have been a problem if I just Googled it. So next time I'll use one five hundredth of a second. And as much as I enjoy the dramatic look that one can achieve with a single light source, it might be time to start taking portraits using multiple light sources when shooting in the studio. The reflector helped slightly with this regard. It didn't quite function as an extra light, but it helped with the softening, with softening the transition from shadow to highlight or highlight highlights a shadow, which can also contribute to making the editing a lot more of a pleasant experience. I do enjoy a smooth transition from, from shadow to highlight. I don't love how I situated the light for some of these angles. For example, in this shot, the predominance of light is on the ballerina's arm, almost drawing most of the attention to the arm, where I want the attention to go predominantly to the ballerina's face and her form. But this is primarily a photo selection error really. She was moving all over the frame, rendering many shots unusable due to her position relative to the light and the backdrop and all those things that were in the photo. So maybe I should have simply just rejected that photo during the selection process. And the final challenge that I faced was an unexpected one, which was the challenge of photographing a happy child who loves the camera. This made it challenging for me to get those dramatic shots that I enjoy taking and capturing and sharing. But you kind of have to just roll with it. So I tried to catch her in moments of distraction or activity. And I did get one cool shot of her in a moment where she'd ask her mom, she'd asked her mom to adjust her clip. One of the clips in her hair were pulling at her that were making her uncomfortable. And during that changing of the clip where she was uncomfortable, I got that shot. I felt a little bad editing her mom out of the shot, but it made for that one dramatic shot that I was hoping to capture during the session. Overall, a fun session. I'm looking forward to trying this again. Next time, at a shutter speed of a 500th of a second. And last but not least, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Artless for giving me access to their music catalog. I've been curating their music for a few months now and I've started the process of gradually introducing their music into my videos. And I've been thoroughly enjoying the process of curating that music. In particular, I am enjoying not only the classical covers of classical music, but the more edgy alternative covers of classical music. They are an absolute blast and I do recommend you give them a listen. They're not only fun to listen to and to work with, but they can also be inspiring to help you visualize future video projects. So do give them a listen if you find yourself at all interested. If you do find that you are at all interested, Feel free to check out the link below. It is an affiliate link, so keep that in mind. It gives me a commission from their end if you choose to subscribe to any of their plans. Again, thank you to the folks at Artlist for giving me access to the music. I am enjoying it thoroughly. And thanks to you a lot for checking out this video. I hope that you did enjoy it. Don't forget to keep taking photos, keep making videos, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you in the next one.